Hi, I'm Bruce Millington and I'm delighted to be joined by my Racing Post colleagues James Hill and Graham Rodway to look back on the career of the one and only Ruby Walsh who took us all by surprise on Wednesday evening when announcing after winning the Punchestown Gold Cup on Kenboy that he would not be seen aboard a horse anymore. He brought the curtain down there and then and what a career it's been. An absolute magician in the saddle. Spanned two of the great eras in, of jump racing. First of all, with his association with Paul Nichols, and then more latterly with Willie Mullins. He won the Grand National absolutely ages ago. He's just been an absolute legend of the saddle. James Hill, would you put Ruby right up there? I mean, in, in terms of the current generation, the ones that we've seen in our lifetime, if we were lucky enough to own a horse that was, that was going for one of the big races at Cheltenham or Aintree or, or wherever, and you had the choice of all the jump jockeys to ride it, would you go Ruby? Every time, yeah, every time. He's, he's the best uh, jump jockey I've ever seen. I don't think I'll, I'll ever see anyone better. What made him so great? He was, he was perfect. He was a full package. Um, everything he did, if you wanted uh, a jockey to get a horse to settle properly, no better person than Ruby. If you wanted to get uh, a jockey to get a horse to jump well, Ruby would, would do it. And um, he was always in the right place in the races. He, he had a, a wonderful sense of, of getting the timing right. Uh, I, I don't think I've seen with any jockey flat or jumps actually. I mean, his timing was just superb. Um, and he, he always would, you know, dictate from the front, get the fractions right, or he'd be coming from way back, uh, flying up the hill at Cheltenham uh, while all the others had run their race. You know, he just was so intelligent at doing that. And uh, he had a real classical style. Um, as I said, he could get uh, horses to settle brilliantly. I mean, he, he wouldn't move going into a fence. Um, his posture was perfect, uh, and he was a joy to watch. Really, it really was a joy to watch. It'll be a great shame that uh, we're not going to see him again. Yeah, Graham, I was just going to say, it's very sad to talk about Ruby Walsh as a jockey in the past tense, isn't it? It sure is, yeah. Um, and I'm sure the punters are going to miss him as well. I mean, uh, all those times we go down to Chilton, I always remember saying to, you know, a, a guy that I know who wasn't really great into his racing, he used to love going down to Cheltenham. He, you know, oh, if I'm losing, I'll just back whatever Ruby's on, you know, because I know I, I know I can trust him, you know, and, and he had that amongst the punters. They, you know, they absolutely loved him. Um, and like all the greats, I suppose, had his own style of doing things and his own way of doing things. I always remember him saying, you know, it's not really about tactics. It's about, you know, just going the right pace that your horse wants to go, you know, and, and he was great at getting his horses into rhythm and, and jump, you know, into a jumping rhythm as well. And, um, yeah, he's going to be he's going to be sadly missed. And, um, yeah, like you say, I mean, probably the greatest thing you can say about him is that um, he was there when... Paul Nichols was right at his peak. You know, he, he obviously had a huge part to play in that success. When Ruby disappeared, the winners didn't, didn't quite come and flow in the same way that they did when Ruby was there. But all of a sudden, Ruby went to Willie Mullins, and Willie Mullins went from being, you know, the, the, the sort of underneath Paul Nichols to suddenly being the best trainer around. You know, so the two, ty the two great trainers that he, that he was able to spend time with, both when he was with them, dominated the sport, you know, and that that can only tell you a lot about what Ruby's giving back to them. In the in the in the week, um, Willie Mullins was only saying in an interview, I think it was on Racing UK, you know, what do you need to be a great trainer? And he was saying, you know, you, you need a good jockey. You need someone who's going to get off the horse and give you the right advice. And he was obviously talking about Ruby there. Well, it's, I suppose it's logical, isn't it? Actually, I hadn't even thought of it like that. That you know, when when he left. Nichols is and went to Mullins, the, 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 the kind of balance of power tipped that way, didn't it? It must be a hell of a draw for a trainer, James, to say my stable jockey is Ruby Walsh, mustn't it? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, well, well so many owners, I think, you know, wanted Ruby on, on their horses and no one else. I mean, at, at Willie Mullins's and Paul Nichols's. I mean, one of the reasons they were there um, having horses with them uh, was because Ruby was a stable jockey. Um, I think also he, he never gave horses that uh, tougher time. I mean, I think one of the reasons why horses like Corto Star and Big Bucks and Tidal Bay and, and, and so on um, just kept going for, for so long at Paul Nichols's what was down to Ruby. He would never give them too hard a race when they were beaten. So that 
I think probably enable them to last longer than you might have actually got if they'd been at another yard. Yeah, you'd have you'd have also obviously to give Paul Nichols his skill at even. Oh yeah, no, Nick Nichols has a, a lot of credit the, as well. It was just a great combination, great basically, wasn't keeping it? Keeping horses going, yeah. Fantastic combination. Um, looking back at the ditch eat years, Graham, what was your what was your favourite association of, of rubies? I suppose it's got to be Corto, hasn't it? Because Denman, I mean, you know, he wasn't. Ruby's exclusive ride, was he? No, I think you'll always remember Demons being sort of Sam Thomas's big day, wouldn't you? You know, whereas Coulto was was Ruby's horse, wasn't he? I mean, all those King Georges and Gold Cups, and you know, also that I that I really liked that Ruby used to give some fantastic rides to was Azertiup, who used to be with Paul Nichols, and that was also that was over hurdles was a very keen goer. You know, he had loads and loads of speed, but very very buzzy, and. Um, once Ruby got on him and, and, and he went chasing, he, he, he was able to harness that ability, you know, and just, he was always on the keen side, but he was able to get him towards the head of, of, of the field and get him to settle at the front. And, and, you, and once Azerti settled under Ruby, he became, he went from being a horse that was kind of listed grade three, maybe hurdler, to being a real top class chaser. And I think Ruby Walsh played a huge part in his development. And it, I think I'll, I'll, I'll wind it up by saying if you could only watch r one race involving Ruby Walsh again, I think I'd have to go for his ride on Tidal Bay where he just kidded him into it. That was absolutely super. What about you, James? Uh, well, financially, Papillon was, was the best day for me. But I, I thought his best ride actually was Champagne Fever and the Supreme Novices from the front. I mean, conditions were really difficult that day for, for front running. There was a strong wind and everything, and uh, he just got the fractions absolutely spot on. He nailed it that day. And Graham? Well, there's been any number, hasn't there? I mean, uh, particularly at Cheltenham. I mean, the, the one that sprang to mind for me, uh, as James already mentioned, was, was his first Grand National. You know, that was when everyone went, wow, you know, this guy's a really top rider straight after that race, you know. And, and um, yeah, I mean, it, it all took off from there, really. But I think if you, were, if you were to say there's one thing about Ruby Walsh that the sport can be grateful for is, and you touched on it earlier, Graham, it's the punters loved him. And I think... There's only a small number of horses, jockeys, trainers who can get people into racing and get them hooked. And Ruby Walsh was absolutely one of them. And there was a fantastic tweet the other night where someone said, blimey, I'm going to have to start thinking about who to back now. Because, you know, he just went with Ruby. I mean, it's just an amazing legacy. And it'll be interesting to see what he does next, because I'm sure he will, be, he will provide really, really interesting new perspectives as a media man as well, James. You know, this is a, an intelligent, smart man. Very, very articulate, isn't he? And, you know, he all, always, we hang on his every word, actually, because his opinions are always really forthright and very, very interesting indeed and well thought through. So, yeah, it would be great to have him on board, really. In the it media. will indeed, yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, one of the all-time greats, Graham, and, you know, it's a shame for the sport. New stars will emerge and we've got some fantastic new young jockeys. Who might, at this stage, be the next Ruby Walsh? Or do you think there won't be another one? <laughs> Well, there, there has to be new stars in everything, don't there? I mean, at the moment, I suppose the, the most exciting prospect out there is young John Joe, isn't it? John Joe O'Neill. And, and, and his, his dad was obviously a great rider as well, you know, and uh, would be up there with the greats himself, you know. And uh, John Joe O'Neill Jr., is, is re this, this season, as well, or last season as it is now, has really started to, um, you know, he started to pick up that finesse to, to, his, to his riding that um, is making all the difference. And he, he's currently claiming, I think, five or seven pounds. But, I mean, that is, is going to be a thing of the past. I mean, he looks like a jockey who could go all the way. And, obviously, he's got all the right people there behind him, advising him with his dad and, obviously, AP at the, you know, involved at the stable. So I think he is going to be one of the young guns who we're going to be looking forward to over the coming years. And, James, final word. I mean, I think everyone kind of assumed that Ruby's career might end when he had his next bad fall, but isn't it great that instead it was when he had that big win? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it'd been, been sad if, if he'd said, I, I just can't go on because you know, I've, I've got another injury. And uh, It was great that he always came back from those injuries and fully deserved that he, he went out on a big winner. And so typical as well, uh, he gave Kemboy a fantastic ride from, from the front, you know, got him jumping, got him settled. It was just typical Ruby. And, you know, what a way to go out. Absolutely. Ruby Walsh, one of the all-time greats, one of the true racing legends. Thank you so much for the memories.